don't put girls twerking on your content saying buy this wrinkle cream don't women gonna be like i don't want nothing from this ratchet post Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to The Curldom. My name is Janelle and I am the founder and KEO of Culture Curls LLC. And today I am back with another video. In today's video, I'll be talking about creating content for social media marketing. And when I say marketing, I don't mean that you have to go out and buy or hire a marketing team or hire a marketing expert. You can go and do this yourself, especially if you're a beginner. So everything I'm gonna be saying in today's video is simple steps and is also beginner friendly. And so if you are looking to attract customers, if you're looking to create a simple marketing strategy then this video is for you and just to give you a little bit of background of exactly what I'm going to be talking about today I'm going to be talking about why content is important what content should be and building a simple content strategy and so if you are getting ready to start your own business or if you've already started your business but you feel like you're all over the place when it comes to content and uploading then this video is going to be very helpful for you so you know I don't want to keep you too long I have my notebook so I do not get sidetracked and so I do not ramble let's go ahead and get right into this video so to start off I'm going to talk about why content is important and the biggest reason why I believe content is important is because it builds brand awareness and it also helps you build your brand's reputation and it brings value to your customers customers should be able to recognize your business from either your slogan a logo or sometimes just from like your font or your colors and so it's very important to establish yourself as a brand especially before you start building content because you want everything to be cohesive and you want Want it to match now if you want to know more about branding i highly recommend you go back and you watch my previous video and i'll also link another video down below that can also help you when it comes to branding but another reason why it is super important to have content is because it shows your customers and your target audience that you know what you're talking about so when you are showing your content you want to showcase your content in a way that it brings customers back to your product or your service. And so you want customers to know that you are knowledgeable and that you're not just trying to sell them any old product and you're not just throwing something in their face, but you're actually an expert and you're knowledgeable and you wanna be able to not just be knowledgeable on your social media platforms or on your website, but you wanna be knowledgeable to a point that if someone approaches you or you approach someone about your business, you can talk about what you know and you can also tell them to, hey, go back to my website or go to my social media platform, um, either Instagram, or whatever social media platform that you use so they can get more information. Customers can trust you when they know that you know what you're talking about and then they will realize you as an expert and say, hey, you know what? He or she knows what she's talking about and I, I trust her and I, I want to learn more or I want to actually buy her product or her service. Another reason why content is important is because it helps your consumers find you. And this goes back to search engine optimization or SEO. For example, let's say a consumer gets onto a search engine and types in products for dry skin or products for rough and bumpy skin and your business pops up. That's because you use the proper keywording so that your content could be found or so your website could be found. And so it is very important that whenever you create content that you're using the right hashtags or the right keywords. So if a consumer is looking for a specific product or a service and that is your niche then they can easily find you or that you have the chance of popping up first or maybe you're somewhere on the first page but you want to be somewhere on the first page because people usually like to find whatever is on that first page and if they don't want to go to the second page uh, some consumers will some will not whatever pops up on that first page is what they will more than likely click on and so it's always important to use the proper keywording so that you are found content also keeps your platforms or your websites updated and the reason why you want to keep it updated is because you want customers to be able to go onto your website or go onto your social media platforms and see that you are consistently posting so consistency is really key when it comes to creating content you don't want to go months without posting it's okay to go a week without posting because maybe that's your weekly upload schedule maybe you only post content once a week but you want your consumers to be aware of that so that when they do go onto your page they can say you know what she only posts once a week or he only posts once a week and that also keeps them kind of engaged as well because if you have great content they're going to want to come back for more each time and so be mindful of your content uploading schedule it's the same thing like on youtube it's the same thing on instagram or on facebook whatever platform that you decide to use you want to make sure that you have a consistent upload schedule and people don't want to look at something that's out of date especially if it was a trend that you were writing on for a while and then now that that trend is gone they don't see you posting anymore so they're gonna be like you know what 
I don't know, this person doesn't seem like they're really consistent or that they really care about their business very much. And so I don't care either. And so they won't buy your product or your service. So be mindful of keeping your product website or your social media websites updated. Next, I want to move on to what content should be. First up, content should definitely be relevant and it should be helpful. If your content isn't helpful to your consumers, then they're just not gonna engage with your content and they will not buy your product or service service and they may not even engage with your platform anymore at all and so to keep them coming back you want to make sure that your content is relevant to your niche and you also want to make sure that it's helping your target audience and so that helps with getting to know your audience you want to know what their concerns are so if you're on Instagram you can post in your stories um, telling people to tell you about their skin concerns you can tell them to message you and help them that way but you want to get to know your consumers and you want to know what they're talking about and what their concerns are this will also help with searching on search engines platforms to see what consumers are talking about in certain forums like reddit for example you can go on reddit and see what consumers are talking about within your niche and what their concerns are and you can build your products or your website around that and build your content around that as well so you want to be very mindful of what consumers are talking about because if you don't know then you're not going to know what to post about and so in order to be extremely helpful to your consumers you want to make sure that your content talks exactly about what they're talking about so that when they do stumble upon your your content they're just like I was just thinking about that and I was just talking about that with a friend the other day and guess what they not only will digest that content for themselves they'll also send it to a friend as well and then that's how you get two people to engage with your content your content also should be clear and entertaining and when I say clear I mean you want to make sure that your consumers understand your content to where they're not saying this is confusing and now they have to comment about it. Most consumers will not comment and ask you for clarity. They'll just keep scrolling. But in some cases, some people will ask you to elaborate a little bit more. That's a good thing because again, it's a conversation starter and that can help you boost engagement. But you want your content to be digestible. You don't want too much to be scattered about that post. Remember, you only have so much room and so much time to capture someone's attention. And so if there's a bunch of words all over your content post, then they're going to be like what is going on they're not going to want to read all of that so try not to be too wordy try to have some pictures and also try to make it entertaining to the point that they can actually interact with that post so if you pride yourself on being funny throw some humor into your post if you want to evoke a sad emotion from your consumer to where they feel bad about what they just saw and they want to purchase more then do that i would not try to make someone sad and emotional because then they're always going to think about your content as sad and emotional and some people may shy away from that I mean for example think about those CDC commercials when they're talking about smokers or think about the ASPCA commercials where you see a dog just crammed into a cage like it makes you very sad and I actually turn so just be mindful of the type of emotion that you want to evoke from your customer you want them to be entertained but you don't want to turn them off you also want your content to have a purpose. You don't want to just post and go. You want your consumers to know why you are posting. What is the purpose of your content? Is it to get people to take better care of their hair? Is it to get people to take better care of their skin? Is the purpose of your content to get people to purchase your product? Be clear about that so that your consumers will know what to do next. For instance, the purpose of today's video is to talk about creating content for social media marketing. Now imagine if I told you that, but then instead I talked about white walls, white bed linens, and plants and flowers. You're going to be like, was this clickbait? And I'm going to say, yes, it was, because my intention was to get you to click on this video so that I can get the view and then so I can continue to post more content that was misleading. But what does that do for me in the long run as a business owner? It decreases my credibility. It gets people to not trust me. It gets people to dislike the post so much that YouTube is just like, yeah, get off our platform. And I don't want that. I want you guys to continue to come back and be more educated on how to run your business or how to take better care of your hair and just to enjoy the content overall. So be mindful of the purpose of your content so that your consumers will also know what the purpose of your content is. Your content should also be careful carefully targeted. Now, how do you find your target audience? You have to do your research. You have to find out which platform they are on, but you also need to make sure that your content matches what your demographic is or what your target audience is. So for instance, if you make products for women who are 45 and up, 
because you notice that women at the age of 45 are starting to get wrinkles then you need to build your content around that don't put girls twerking on your content saying buy this wrinkle cream because guess what don't women gonna be like i don't want nothing from this ratchet post so they're going to click off of it and not engage with it you want to make sure that it suits their lifestyle as well you definitely want to get to know your consumer if you don't know anyone who is 45 and up then you need to get to know someone for me i have my mother and i have friends who are 45 and up and so i can ask them hey what's your lifestyle like so i can build content around that but i don't have to do that because my demographic is pretty widespread but for people People who have a narrow demographic then you need to go out there you need to find out what your consumer likes this will also help you build credibility because they're gonna say hey you know what she actually cares about what we want and what we do and her content reflects that as well and so does her product or her service and so just be mindful of your consumer I said it in the last video your consumer is the main character or the star of your brand story your content is the guide that leads them to your product or service and your product or service is is the hero products or service it all connects together so that you can solve your consumers problem so remember that like I said if you did not watch my last video make sure that you go back and you watch it so that you can understand branding more clearly before you start to build content before I get to my next point I briefly want to go over the types of content that there are there's text there's video, there's podcast, and then there's photos. Now you don't have to do all four right off the bat, especially when you're just starting out in your business, because not only do you have to worry about viewership, but with podcasts, you also have to worry about listenership, and you don't wanna stretch yourself too thin in the very beginning. Take your time getting to podcasts, or you can start out with podcasts and, and educate people that way, because some people like to listen to advice or education on the go. So it's all up to you what type of content you want to introduce your customers to. So just be mindful of that before you start. Now I'm gonna talk about building a content strategy now this is very simple it's not very complex you can always add on to it you can take away from it whatever works for you but I want to talk about building a content strategy because you're going to need a content strategy because you're going to need to build content and have content saved so that you can post content throughout the week or whatever your upload schedule will be a content strategy is a focused plan to produce and manage content that is developed for a target audience so be mindful again of your branding and also your consumer when you're building your content because it's going to be very helpful with helping you remain consistent when you're building your content the first step is to define your goals now your content again goes back to your branding what do you want your customers to recognize about your business what do you want your brand to stand for what goals do you want to accomplish with your content you don't want to post your content and then no one receive anything from it you want to make sure that even you will react to it and like I said don't be biased really put yourself in your consumer's shoes what do you want your consumers to get from your content the second step is you want to identify your target audience now we just talked about this you want to remember who your content is for are they for young children is it for a teenager is it for an adult is it for an elderly person what is your target audience you want to make sure that your content again is built around their lifestyle Step three is to examine your competition for the good and the bad. Go into your competitor's comment section, see what their customers are saying. Do they like their product? Do they like their services? Do they dislike their product or their services? See why. And if they do dislike their product or their service, you can use that information to build your content so you can track their customers. However, you do not want to bad mouth your competition. Don't use their name. Don't say XYZ company don't got nothing on me. They use products that come from whales and we use products that come from plants because if you do that and you say that and it's not true they can take you to court for defamation and then you're going to be dragged to an unnecessary feud that could cause you to lose customers you can simply say our competitors and then that's it and go from there don't say their name say our competitors our competition uses this our competition uses that while we use this which is more beneficial for you Step four is to decide your content's frequency. And what I mean by this is you want to have a consistent upload schedule. So a lot of people will say this about YouTube. You don't wanna just upload every single day or you don't wanna upload on Sunday one week and Tuesday next week and then Wednesday on the third week. You wanna make sure that you are consistently uploading so that you don't confuse your consumers and so that people will know when you are uploading so that they'll be ready and waiting for you. Keep them excited. Don't just post all over the place. You may decide to post at a certain time of day. Instagram 
Instagram gives you insights where you can track your metrics and one of those metrics being the time of day and the actual day when your followers are the most active. So let's just say that your followers are the most active at 3 p.m. on Thursday. You're gonna wanna post at 3 p.m. on Thursday because you want them to see it. But let's say that they're also the most active at 6 p.m. on Thursday. Should you ignore six o'clock or should you post somewhere in between? The best thing to do for some people, they will say to post twice a day, post at three and at six. And some people may say post in between. It's completely up to you. I would say post twice a day because you want to have that as your upload schedule so that you make sure that everybody is seeing it. Because some people are at work at three o'clock. Some people get off work at three o'clock. Some people are at work until six o'clock and then they will see it when they get off work. So it's completely up to you, but just be mindful of how active your followers are on social media. Step five is to select your marketing channel. And when I say marketing channel, I mean which platform are you going to use? Are you going to use Instagram? Are you going to use Facebook, Pinterest? If you're going to do all three, I would definitely say start with one and master one first before you move on to the next. You don't want to try to upload and remain consistent on all three platforms at once because you can stretch yourself too thin and you can become overwhelmed and you can forget to upload on one channel. So definitely master one channel first, get your audience there and then move on to the next platform. Uh, that goes back to what I said earlier. You may want to find out where your target audience is. So if you have a certain demographic who's a little bit older and they don't use social media you're gonna to have to find another way to reach them and so that goes along with selecting your marketing channel you want to make sure that your target audience is going to be exactly where you're going to be marketing to step six is to budget out your investment now this goes for people who want to purchase advertisement you don't have to but you can if you want people to see you at a larger rate and so what I would say is make sure that step one through five is definitely completed beforehand because you don't want to just spend money on advertisement on different platforms and lose money in the process. You want to make sure that you know where your target audience is going to be and how much money you want to spend and how many days you want your ad to run so that you can get the best return on your investment. Step seven is to measure your success and track your results. Whenever you post content, you want to go back the next day and look and see how well your post did, how many likes did it get, how many comments did it get, how many shares did it get, how many saves did it get. You want to look at that because that can help you to know what your consumers are liking and what you should continue posting. Did they like that you talked about helpful tips on how to clean their face properly or how to apply makeup properly? Because if that's the case, you want to keep making sure that you are posting content that is just like that. Not to duplicate it to where it's just like, didn't you just post this? But like, it's just an addition to what you said in your last post. By doing this, you'll make sure that your consumers keep coming back and that they continue to engage with your content. The more they engage with it, the more that the algorithm will continue to push your content up so that more people can see it. Now that all seven steps are completed, you can now go on to develop your editorial calendar. You can set up your calendar by theme or by week, but you wanna make sure that you have enough archive post saved ahead of time so that you're not scrambling trying to make up content as you go but make sure that you have it set and ready to go so that you can post at the specific time of day that you want to post so your audience can see your content and also make sure that you set a routine that goes back to what time of day are you going to post what day of the week are you going to post are you going to post daily it's all up to you but you want to make sure that you remain consistent so that your followers or that your subscribers know how consistent you are and know to wait for you and be ready for your next post okay we are at the end of this video thank you so much for making it to the end there was a lot of information about content creating in today's video so down below in the comment section make sure you tell me what was your greatest takeaway from today's video this is also the the time where I ask you to do something for me. I need you to hit that like button, subscribe, and also make sure you click the bell so you get notified every single time I post on this channel. And I'll be seeing you guys real soon. Thank you. Bye y'all.